iki dakika. Uh, greetings. This is not a Thanksgiving message, but I want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving in advance. Ephesians 5.20 says, Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. On that note, family of faith, I want to thank you for having me back. Dr. Ferdis and Wendy, I'm very grateful uh, for the opportunity to assist you in your ministry. Now it is time for the Word of God. The Bible says that uh, for the Word of God is alive and active, so let us examine it carefully. The title of our message today is Encourage One Another, and the Bible test is 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11. If you have your Bible, uh, please turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11. And if it is convenient for you, please stand for the reading of God's word. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11. I read, <clears throat> Therefore encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. This is the word of the Lord. You may be seated. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, precious Redeemer and friend, who could have thought that a lamp could rescue the souls of men? You made provision for our sinful nature. You sent your only begotten Son to die for our sins forever. We are grateful. We worship you this morning in the splendor of your holiness. Open our hearts and minds to receive your word. Give us the grace to become increasingly like Christ in this life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. When an old pastor who was in the final stages of his ministry was asked, looking back, what should you have done differently? His response, I should have encouraged God's people more. I'm sure this pastor was not suggesting that most of his Simons should have been on encouragement because clearly, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 states, All scripture is God's breath and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Within this spectrum, I believe the pastor was alluding to the fact that a little more encouragement would have been in order. Why? Because on one hand, life is good simply because God is good. On the other hand, this same life that we live in is rough and full of troubles because the devil is a liar. No wonder in the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, the Bible contains several scriptures of encouragement, comfort, and hope. Psalm 46.1 God is our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30, Jesus Christ says to his disciples, and by extension to us, he said, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul, for my soul, for my and you find rest for your soul, for my soul is, I take that again. 
Matthew 11, verses 28 through 30, Jesus Christ said, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my soul upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. For my, for my soul is ready, and my, uh, uh, you know, I, I didn't have a, a good sleep tonight. Easy. There we go. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. There we go. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Also, as uh, the famous Psalm 23, the Lord is our shepherd, I shall not, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in one. He makes me lie down in green pastures, he leads me beside quiet waters, he restores my soul, he guides me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. All the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This morning, Apostle Paul followed the same suit in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11. He said, therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. On that note, the purpose of this message is to call our attention to the benefit and importance of encouraging one another as we run our Christian race. Before we get to, before we examine our test closely, let us take a look at the general context. What we now call the book of First Thessalonians was a letter written by Apostle Paul to the Christians in Thessalonica and by extension to all believers everywhere. He planted this church during his second missionary journey. Clearly, these Christians were the minority in their society, and because of their faith, they were severely persecuted by the Greeks, by the Jews, and also by the Roman authorities. Apostle Paul wrote this letter to encourage them and also to address their misunderstanding about the resurrection and Christ's return. These Christians thought that Christ's return was going to be immediate. So they were confused and perplexed when some of their brothers and sisters died while they were still expecting Christ. So Apostle Paul comforted them and clarify their misunderstanding. He said to them, listen, Christ could come any day from now, but in the meantime, you should not be idle. You should be busy helping one another. Help the weak, be patient with one another, so on and so forth. He assured them that those Christians who passed on before Christ's coming, will be resurrected upon Christ's arrival. So in chapter 4, verses 13 and 14, he said, Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death, so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep with him. He concluded the letter with an exhortation, and that is in chapter 5, verses 16 and 18. He said, be joyful always, pray continuously, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. That as a background, let us look closely in, uh, let us examine our text closely, and that is chapter 5, Verse 11. This verse starts with the word, therefore. A similar word is so. Another similar word is consequently. As you know, when the word therefore is used in a statement, it is used to start a sentence that is caused by something preceding it. In this case, Apostle Paul was saying that, folks, Based on what I've told you thus far about the resurrection, Christ's return, not being idle, being busy, helping one another, help the weak, 
be patient with one another, so on and so forth. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. The key word in this verse is the word encourage. Encourage. We need encouragement in our discouragement or when we are discouraged. You see, everyone without exception deals with discouragement at some point in their life. So, discouragement is the basis of encouragement. So the question is, what is discouragement? One William Ward defines discouragement as follows. Listen to this carefully. He said, discouragement is dissatisfaction with the past, distaste for the present, and distrust of the future. It is ingratitude for the blessings of yesterday, indifference to the opportunities of today, and insecurity regarding strength for tomorrow. It is unawareness of the presence of beauty, unconcerned for the news of our fellow man, and unbelief in the promises of old. It is impatient with time, immaturity of thought, and impoliteness to God. Unquote. This definition is packed and could be a whole sign of itself. Let us take a look at some pieces of it. He said, discouragement is dissatisfaction of the past. You see, the devil has the tendency to remind us of our past mistakes and unpleasant situations. We are discouraged when we think about these things. The definition says that we are so discouraged. In fact, we are so discouraged, we wind up disliking the present. And sometimes we are completely oblivious of the present because we are so discouraged. The logical question is, what is the source of discouragement? What is the source of discouragement? Answer. The source of our discouragement is Satan, the devil. Every bad and unwholesome thought comes from him. Every bad and unwholesome thought comes from him. Our fear, our self-condemnation, most persistent problems and challenges that we face in this world, Discontentment, comparing ourselves to others, desiring what others have. All these thoughts weigh us down, and they are from the devil. The Bible says that Satan, the devil, is a liar. He's the father of lies. At least one person here. Is thinking out loud and said, Pastor, what is the cure for discouragement? Since everyone at the point in time in life deals with discouragement. That is a valid question. There are several cure. For the sake of time, I share two with you. Number one, the word of God. Number one, the word of God. Listen, the word of God is true. Jesus Christ says in John 14, 6, I am the way and the truth and the life. So use the word of God to encourage yourself and others. Once in a while, when I get discouraged myself, one of my favorite Bible passages that I go to, to encourage myself, is Philippians 4, 8. Which says, Finally, brothers and sisters, 
whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. In other words, these are the things that God said we should think about. Nothing more, nothing less. So when I'm discouraged, I ask myself, I will say to myself, Vincent, which part of your thought is consistent with what God asks you to think about? I will answer my own question, none. Then I will say to myself, if that is true, you must redirect your thought from here and to think about only those things that God said you should think about. So I wake up in the morning. I said, on this list, what is the number one item on this list? He said, whatever is true. I said, Vincent, you must think about what is true. And what is true? The word of God is true. So I think about the word of God. The word of God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That is true. The word of God said, cast all your anxiety on me because I care for you. That is true. The word of God gives me the absolute assurance that absolutely nothing will be able to separate me from his love. That is true. Neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is true. I think about the fact that God saved me and called me to a holy life, not because of anything that I've done, but because of his own purpose and grace. That is true. I think about the amazing grace of God. That is true. Then I take a break. I said, let me get away from the spiritual blessings of God that are all true in my life. Let me take a break and go to the material blessings, the physical blessings of the Lord that are true. I think about the fact that I have roof over my head. That is true. Food on the table daily. That is true. My ability to see and speak and hear, that is true. There are so many people that cannot hear and speak and hear. I think about the good health that I enjoyed every single day, that is true. Even when I fall sick, I, am, I have facility to one of, the most, one of the best hospitals in the world. That is true. I think about my lovely, beautiful, peaceful wife of 32 years, that is true. I, in a million years, I could not have asked for a better wife. 32 years of wonderful, enjoyable marriage. That is true. I think about my lovely children. That is true. I think about the father. Oh, wait a minute. I'm a U.S. citizen. I said, a couple of times driving, I cried because I'm a U.S. citizen. Or sometimes, a couple of times I wake up in the morning, I cry. I'm a U.S. citizen. I, I live in the best country in the world, a land flowing with milk and honey. Sometimes I cry. Oh, wait a minute. I might be speaking to the wrong audience. This is a bad illustration. I bet some of you have not cried before for being a US citizen. <laughs> How do you? No, I don't think so. It is not likely that you have cried before for being a US citizen. You know why? Because if you are the biological child of a king, you are a prince. You are a princess. You don't wake up in the palace and say, oh, thank you, Jesus, I'm in the palace. No, because you were born and raised in the palace. But when you are born and raised in the middle of nowhere, and then all of a sudden you are adopted by the king, and you are now in the palace, sometimes when you wake up in the morning, you look at the ceiling and say, what am I doing here? How did I get here? You cry. Am I making sense? You cry. I don't expect some of you to cry for being a U.S. citizen. There are billions and billions and billions of people on this planet Earth that will do almost anything to be a U.S. citizen. So I will cry. I think about that. That is true.
Oh, by the way, on a higher level, you also know that all of you are also adopted because the people of Israel are God's chosen one. We are adopted into the kingdom of God. You know that, right? For I'm not ashamed of the gospel because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone, first to the Jew, then to the Gentiles. We are all Gentiles, except if we have some Jews in it. Oh, by the way, you remember? I started this process in the morning, 11 o'clock p.m. It's time for me to go to bed. Then I asked myself, uh, 11 o'clock, I'm not even done yet thinking about what is true. You remember, that is the only first item on this list. <laughs> it's all day long. And tomorrow, I can continue. The whole month, I can continue to think about what is true. And how many items do you have on the list? Eight. Some people said six. The last two summarized. The first six. It doesn't matter. But there's a lot of stuff on this list. Just one. So by 11 p.m. or 11.30, I'm about to go to bed. I'm not done yet thinking about what is true. Then sometimes I ask myself, wait a minute, what, 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 what was I discouraged about again? Sometimes I remember, sometimes I forgot. Because all day long I've been thinking about what is true. It's time for me to go to bed. Then I realize that I'm not able to exhaust thinking about, talking about the things that are true. God's blessings on my life. Then sometimes I burst into uh, 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 praise and worship. One of my favorite uh, Nigerian praise and worship songs. It's not likely that most of you will know it. Maybe you do. It says, what the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell it all. A-L-L. What the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell it all. He saved me and washed me with his blood. So I can shout hallelujah. I can shout hallelujah. Praise the Lord. That is the lyrics. If you promise not to listen to my voice, but the lyrics, I will sing this song. You promise? <laughs> because somebody told me the other time, he said, please, spare your audience. Just stick to preaching. Don't sing when you're up there. <laughs> okay, you promise. So this song goes like this. What the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell it all. What the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell it all. What the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell it all. He saved me and washed me with his blood. So I can shout hallelujah. I can shout hallelujah. I can shout Praise the Lord. Thank you. For the sake of time, let us quickly go to the second cure of discouragement. And that is being an encourager to others. Clearly, some of us are better encouragers than the others. However, the ministry of encouragement is for every believer. The last time I was here was August 27. After worship service, I exchanged greetings with Brother Steve. And I asked Brother Steve, I said, uh, how is Pam doing and why is she not here today? Brother Steve told me that Pam went to be with the Lord in April. Needless to say, I was pretty shocked and saddened. Because you may not know this, every time I come here, in addition to just looking forward to seeing your wife, her smile was very warming in spite of what she was going through. 
Obviously, my wife and I did not attend the funeral service because we were not aware of it. Brother Steve was kind enough to send us the funeral service video. After we watched the video, we learned a lot about Pam and her family. A lot of things that we did not know uh, before. But two things stood out in that service to us. Number one, in addition to the fact that she was a lovely wife and a caring mother and grandmother, the other two things that stood out to us was number one, the fact that she was one of the founding mothers of this church. And number two, the fact that she was a wonderful encourager. There is one man in the Bible, his name is Joseph. This man encouraged so many people so much that the apostles named him Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. So Pam was Barnabas here at Family of Faith. Most of us may not be a great encourager like Barnabas in the Bible or Pam, but the fact of the matter is the ministry of encouragement is for everyone without any exception. So we ought to encourage one another in words and deeds. Moving along, let's take a look at the second part of our test. So in addition to encouraging one another, Apostle Paul also said that we should build each other up. How? By supporting the hope and aspirations of one another, appreciating one another, offering words of kindness. That is how we build each other up. Most of us are very good in building other people up, but... Sometimes, the closest people, the most important people in our lives, we sometimes neglect to build them up. We are not intentional enough. Our spouse, children, our siblings, nieces, nephews, these people, we need to be very mindful and be intentional about building them up. When was the last time you left a note for your spouse or your child with words that will build them up? When was the last time you went to a dinner with your spouse and you just look at him or look at her for three, four minutes, just pour words of admission, letting her know or letting him know how much you appreciate and respect for what he or she is doing? When was the last time we do that. Words of affirmation. And listen to me carefully. The fact of the matter is positive words and phrases uplift each and every one of us up. And by the way, they don't cost anything. The last part of this verse is very interesting. On one hand, Apostle Paul was telling this church at Thessalonica, Thessalonica and by extension us that we should encourage one another and build each other up. On the other hand, he was also saying or alluding to the fact that we are already doing so. He said, therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing. Here's the conclusion of the matter. As we look to eternal life, we continue to live in an imperfect world, a place full of troubles. Hence, Jesus Christ commanded that his people should be encouraged. Jesus Christ himself said in the uh, Gospel of John, chapter 16, verse 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Apostle Paul 
follow suit in our text this morning. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 11. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing. Let's pray. Gracious God, we are grateful for the gift of your word. Thank you especially for your word of encouragement, comfort, and hope. Thank you for reminding us today about the importance and benefit of encouraging one another and building each other up. We pray for those of us who are discouraged right now because of one circumstance or another. We pray for your peace that surpasses all understanding. Give us the grace to endure now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy to the only God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, power, and authority through Jesus Christ, our Lord, before all ages, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.